Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very senior professional and coach from the Bahamas, Karen Carey. Karen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Ashutosh. Uh, Karen is an executive coach. She's a strategist, a human capital consultant, and a business partner. She's the former senior vice president of human resources with the iconic Atlantis Resort. So Karen, before we talk human resources, tell me about your own journey in brief. Well, my journey journey began, uh, well, immediately after university, I decided to join the hospitality industry mm -hmm. with uh, no intention of joining res human resources, <laughs> uh, making that a career. Mm -hmm. However, I I learned that as I began that entry level position in the training aspect of, uh, of the operation, I uh, got to, I, I had the privilege of getting some insight into various aspects of the company and how it operates. And I was able to, uh, and through that, I was able to, I made a lot of observations. I, became, I, it, I accelerated my curiosity and began to learn uh, just various aspects of leadership, of management. Of, uh, and of course, the, the people part of the business as well, as, as well as the operational side. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, uh, I, I, one of the things I learned is that it, to, to grow and uh, to grow and, and progress and achieve your goals is to just uh, can continue to be you know, intensely curious. Mm -hmm. And so out of that, I was able to uh, assume various roles, um, very surprisingly. <laughs> so uh, I was promoted to into human resources and learned a lot. I asked, uh, which I it which stretched me. And I got into managerial positions, which meant a lot more of uh, strategizing, coordinating, conflict management, problem resolution, practices, policies, et cetera, and building a culture. Uh, of course, along the way, there were some mistakes. However, they were great learning experiences. I learned from them, uh, which helped me begin to, to really strengthen the, the core of, um, you know, just the, of leadership. Hmm. So in so doing, uh, in so doing, I, I think a, a pivotal moment for me was when I had to, to um, my company was acquired and had to, in a pretty short, in a very short time, recruit 10,000 people <laughs> um, in a population where the skill sets were not as as, as available. And um, and that stretched me quite a, quite a bit and allowed me to really focus on my project, our project management, leadership skills, relational skills, mm -hmm. and working with uh, individuals. Well and, uh, and as a result, the, you know, there was, the, there was successes. So Very that well helped said. me then. Thank you. Well so, you know, uh, I remember when I started off uh, as a young uh, manager out of business school in 45 years ago, there used to be a personnel manager and a human and an industrial relations manager. And today it's the chief human resources officer who's an important part of the C-suite. I wanted to ask you, how has the human resources function evolved over the years? Oh, it's it's uh it's it's been transformative, which is uh, which is very good. I think and to particularly to, it would move from administrative to transactional to operational and now human resources sits at the C-suite level driving strategy mm. and and the direction of, of the company's company and and to be the, the actually the champion for, for, for particularly from the people side which is as you know a very significant part of the business of any mm. business and uh, and develop a, a culture uh that 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 helps support the the strategy of the organization mm -hmm. Well, so, so it's been it's been quite, it's been it has changed significantly. In addition, you know, just from a workforce perspective and, a, and, a, and dealing with the workforce perspective, it's about really employee engagement. It's about talent management. It's about diversity. It's also about you know just the technology uh, to, to 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 be more efficient, and then the employee the overall employee well being. So creating an exceptional uh, employee experience is critical and for, and and foremost in in the human resources world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what, in your view, are some of the common misconceptions about human resources? And how have you addressed these? Well, I think just just continuing from what we had just spoken, there's a view, there's a misconception that HR human resources does not does not drive strategy, is not a part of the strategic decisions. Mm -hmm. So I, so also that and there are some views 
in some, you know, I, I think it's still evolving where there's a, a perception that HR is still very administrative and uh, maybe hires, just hire, just hiring and firing mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and maybe some part of payroll. So that, so those are some misconceptions. And sometimes also there's a view that, that HR is, is purely and solely uh, management driven and, uh, and the focus is that it, it does not encompass right. the, you know, the human element. Hmm. So, you know, I've also been talking to several people and I find that over the years, technology has started to change human resources to improve efficiency and employee experience. I'd love to get your perspective on what has your experience been. Oh, absolutely. I think it, it has just as it has in other other you know, operational areas of, of any business and, and human, human resources, uh, but in particular, the technology has has I think has transformed its practices, processes, efficiencies. Uh, I think also employee experiences. And one of the things I think in, in the process and is moving, it has moved rapidly. Uh, KPIs, getting you know, just a generating reporting and and just doing a deeper dive in diagnosis and telling us what what to, what the data is telling us to then make some some strategic and uh, real on the ground real life experiences in in almost real time. So I think so that is so and it will continue to evolve, uh, particularly with AI. That's going. I think technology will certainly help us. Yeah, you know, I think making some thoughtful decisions as we enter into that world, and we're already there. So I think that's exciting. Hmm. There is also another uh, perspective that people have given me that organizations are increasingly using artificial intelligence to manage talent. Uh, yes. What are your yeah. thoughts? And wonder what if with artificial intelligence and machines coming in, where is the human perspective? Well, I, I think that's uh, that is going to be it's 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 a good a, a balance uh, that I think. Uh, it, just leaders in general have to be uh, made mindful of uh, also security, but uh, I, I think it is important that the human element, the human perspective, the interactions, the uh, the relationship building is so vital, and it should not replace that, but it should augment those uh, those experiences. So I think that's some that's it's a challenge, and sometimes where you you would, would just if we could just press a button or just uh, have have machines do the work for us, which is I think certainly useful and beneficial however there needs to be some thoughtful considerations of how do we how do we merge the two and, and ensure that we're not losing the human experience mm, very interesting my other question is that you know when you were running a, a very very large network of people as a senior hr leader how did you approach creating a workplace culture that supports both high performance and employee well-being. Uh, in many, in, in my experiences, I've had the fortunately for me, I've had the good, uh, I had the great opportunity to work with some some phenomenal leaders at the very top, you know, CEOs, and who who appreciate and understand that you know the that the culture is an asset, and it should be, and it require and to make the change, it requires the leader and lead with along with his leaders championing being on the front line and champion, championing those uh that just employee engagement and i think that was but luckily for me that that helped me tremendously and as a result the leader was able to enlist the senior executive leaders and, and cascade that across the organization mm -hmm. and through that it came with with, with Tense, with, with pretty intense communication, collaboration, involving all the team members in the input of the vision and the mission, and you know, and and again, helping to constantly connecting why people why their why their jobs matter and how does it link to the overall vision of the organization. So mm -hmm. it was so in, in addition to recognition, uh, just assuring that you know that the input and the execution of those of of the mission is being recognized and celebrated. And allowing for innovation and creativity. So, and having and really encouraging employees to be to have an entrepreneurial spirit. And I think with the help of some very talented team members as well, I've had the good fortune of also working with many talented uh, leaders in the in, in, across the organization. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we were able to raise the level of engagement mm -hmm. and and uh, help us grow as a company. Mm -hmm. Well said. So, one more question related <laughs> to human resources. Then I want to move to coaching. Uh, you know, in your opening comments, you spoke a little bit about diversity, equity, and inclusion. I wanted to ask you, over the years, 
as such a senior HR leader, how have DEI practices evolved and what impact have they had in the organizations you have worked in? Well, it, it, it has certainly has evolved uh, significantly, particularly in recent years. Initially, you know, the 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 focus was initially on you know race and color and age and uh, and over and disabilities. I think it, the so there's been a, a tremendous shift, which I think brings so much richness to any organization, different perspectives, different values, and also created an awareness among. Uh, individuals that that at one po- at some time was not that important to the workplace, and and so I think as as, as it has evolved and will be and is continuing, I mm. think there's bringing a lot more appreciation also for different cultures, different perspectives, different uh and 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 other areas within you know just within the in in the network of of, of just experiencing experiences within the workplace. Mm. So uh, it's and I think that's. And, and, and it's been beneficial for all. And I right. think that's that's a great right. thing. Absolutely. So let's talk about coaching now, Karen. What drew you to executive leadership coaching after such a successful career in strategic human resources management? I think, you know, the, I've been, it, it always it was a natural transition for me, mm-hmm. being, being in human resources. I had the opportunity to work with many leaders, uh, leaders that are new and fresh and and not having the the the, the skills and the effectiveness that they desired, and also those that that work. So mm. I I took great pride and delight in being able to coach and mentor mentor individuals and see their transformative behaviors. Mm. So as a result of that, I'm inspired to continue to really to to continue to do that and and with the with the just just having others reach out to to receive that coaching and that development and and guide them through a co-creative process to uncover their their full potential that sometimes just lie buried and they're not able to unearth that so as a result of that i was that that excited me and then to be able to see the transformative behaviors um and in the idea of just making an impact on people's lives is what is, is what, what inspired me to be able to do that great response and, you know, in the uh, coaching work that you do with leaders, what are some of the common challenges, in your view, leaders face today? And how does coaching address these challenges? Actually, I'm glad you you, you, you referred to them as leaders, because sometimes we have managers and sometimes, and which we find a lot of, but sometimes the mm-hmm. leadership is where, you know, sometimes where the challenge becomes so, so. What, so I think one of the things that we've that we've been able to, to, to do is is be able to help help I help them the challenges they have is just how do I embrace the team how do I get and in, in, in inspire trust and how do I gain productivity uh, adaptability you know the world you know, the world changes life changes organization changes and, and there's a shift shift in structure shift in product shift in services and helping and the challenges they have is just help helping uh, enlist. And their employees and their, their team members and their peers to be able to make that shift readily and for and successfully. Right. So so those so those are many of the so building teams, you know, just problem solving, conflict management, adaptability, those mm-hmm. are some of those those areas that really that they're challenged with and 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 as a result, they find themselves stuck and frustrated. And as a result of that, then they're not able to achieve the you know the, the goals and, and their desires. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are several leaders who are skeptical or resistant to change because of what coaches recommend. How do you approach such leaders? I think I think it's, it begins, it starts with, you know, with just being in a place where they are, being, empath- being understanding their perspective. It takes time, just listening, talking mm-hmm. through. Uh, and and really empathizing and understanding rather than looking at sometimes from our own perspective and and just uh, and just just again working through what's getting in the way why is it getting in the way understanding their values understanding mm-hmm. their past experiences sometimes you know brings a lot of of uh, skepticism as well right. and understanding their core values as their values resonate with you know the values of the company or the leaders or the values that uh, or the goals that are are that we're tending to achieve, mm. uh, and also 
just the, maybe the, perhaps sometimes they're in, in the not appreciating the value they bring mm -hmm. in the to the to 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 the to the role uh, that they are uh, entrusted with. So th so just working through those and then and then co so could they co-creating a process together rather than is because really the is the potential is is within the, it within the individual and they are capable of doing much more. However, sometimes we we tend not to we don't we tend not to ex work through that. So mm. communication, collaboration, and really questioning, just having a, a, a questioning mindset and listening rather than telling. Uh, sometimes we, we listen uh, because we're juggling many balls. We, we listen, but we, do, we listen peripherally. And that I think so out, so out of that process, then it begins to develop rapport and then begin to, in over, over time, uh, develop a path to help persons to enlist them mm. well to said. coaching. Well said. I have time for two more questions for you. What My next question is, what strategies do you employ to nurture continuous growth and continuous learning with the leaders you work with? Well, I think one of the foundations for the coaching that I provide is, um, it starts with, you know, just what is called positive intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, it's called PQ and, and many, it's used around the world uh, globally with, and uh, there's a it, it was the brainchild of a Stanford University professor who has done a, a, a tremendous amount of work with thousands of individuals, thousands of companies. So PQ intelligence really is helping. Is, is the purpose is to is to help teach leaders how to identify the the positive the, the sage mode, the positive you know just the positive aspects of their of, of what they what they how they operate and lead mm. versus the saboteurs. There are a lot of saboteurs. Within our, you know, within our head, that you know, that this, that that really very silently just sometimes consume us, and then we become frustrated, and we're not able to identify readily when those saboteurs are at, at work that are that are really sabotaging the mm -hmm. positive aspects of what we do. So it's really about, about break, building. Uh, so the the beginning of that process starts with just building a very mental, strong mental muscles mm -hmm. and be able to work through and and. As a result of, of managing the leaders able to identify that those, then they're able to really make decisions and know how to control those. So that's the whole process of, uh, and that's the foundation. And out of that, then we get to work through a process to uncover and be able to identify those saboteurs and work through those in, in, and develop a path to help them achieve their, their desired goals. Mm, well said. Can you also talk a little bit, Karen, about uh, the importance of goal setting? in the coaching process and how do you keep leaders accountable? You know, we talked earlier about communication. Goal setting is so critical. Having a clear, very decisive and precise uh, view and, 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 and agreement around the goal setting. And again, one of the aspects, one of the important aspects that I've found, I've learned is collaboration, ensuring just, again, working through those goals, understanding those goals, clear roles and responsibilities and and ensuring and identifying you know, again from the team from the team perspective what do they bring how can they contribute to each of those goals mm -hmm. as the collective 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 team and giving them again and then giving them the uh the the, the opportunity to to execute on those to champion those goals it is again again championing communicating it's having some milestones accountability is so critical you know, again, and, and accountability in a positive way, uh, so that it, so and then and then and then I, I identify those challenges, those gaps, and sometimes we have to re you know just re-engineer. However, I, I, and again, celebrate those wins, and and then and then again, encourage innovation to close the gap, and 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 to and to continually, uh, you know, just highlight and and engage mm -hmm. to to continue the goals, mm -hmm. and and. Mm. Also tie those goals into some in, into some positive consequences. Mm. Yeah, so an evaluation and performance and you know, and the recognition around those and celebrate that. That's right. And my last question to you, Karen. How do you think coaching can influence positive organizational change? I think it can because individual coaching, and this it can be group coaching and individual coaching. I think focus a lot on individual coaching. Mm. As at times, at times, it, some individuals need individual 
uh, path and journey and, and, and an individual roadmap. And sometimes organizations, while they're, they're, I think there are many efforts to do that, sometimes they do not you know, address and help the individual address their own specific needs and their desires mm -hmm. and their own road. So as a result of that, I believe that um, co collectively and individually, that certainly strengthens the ability to be able to influence you know, to influence the, uh, the the direction of the company. I, 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 I'll tell you a story about a, a, a leader that I, I'm familiar with some time ago. She was, she, I'll call her Sarah. She was very, very smart, talented, doing well, progressing, moving forward in her in, in, in the business and, and really enjoying a number of promotions, enjoying a wonderful play life, network life. And at some point, as she grew, continued to grow and take on more responsibilities, she had a roadblock. Mm -hmm. And she became, she, she, and as a result of that, her team was floundering. She was not you know, getting the promotions that she thought she should, or they did not added responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And as, as a result of that, she became flustered and frustrated, and she did not know what to do. Despite her efforts, she still was not accomplishing what she wanted or what she thought she deserved. So yeah. she, so she reached for some coaching and she enlisted it with the coach and out, out of taking the working with the coach uh she was able to unearth a lot of the you know understand her, her style the challenges she was having her ability to be able to navigate and, and the organizational dynamics so out of that she was able to really have a discovery and then put together an, a plan to help her get there and as a result of that she was able to again over time enlist the trust of her team it, again and and of course her you know, her compatriots and her the responsibilities that she mm. that was interested and she was able to then make a, a great discovery make some personal changes and she, she was back on track to enjoying her career mm, what a fabulous story thank you for sharing this and on that mm -hmm. note karen i just want to say thank you so much for speaking to me about your own journey which seems to have been so fascinating thank you for speaking to me at length about human resources and so many different aspects of HR that we covered today, uh, including how technology uh, is making a difference in human resources. Thank you also for speaking to me about different aspects of coaching. Thank you again and good luck to you. Thank you so much and to you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.